You might think reality is something fixed, something that exists whether you're here or not. You're born into it and die leaving it behind like you almost had no effect. But what if it's the other way around? What if the world around you only takes shape because you're looking at it? This isn't some abstract philosophical thought experiment. There's an actual phenomenon known as the observer effect, where the act of observing something changes its outcome. And it doesn't just apply to subatomic particles in a lab. It might have more to do with your daily life than you realize. The observer effect was first noticed in quantum mechanics, and that's where things get kind of weird. There's a famous experiment called the double slit experiment, where scientists fired tiny particles at a barrier with two slits in it. When they didn't measure which slit the particles went through, they acted like waves, going through both slits at once and creating an interference pattern on the other side. But the moment they placed a detector to see which slit each particle passed through, the pattern disappeared. The particles acted like solid objects, going through one slit or the other. The simple fact of measuring them, of observing them, forced them to behave differently. Before they were watched, they existed in a strange state of possibility. But as soon as they were observed, reality made a choice. It's as if nature itself was waiting to see what you wanted to know. Richard Feynman, one of the greatest physicists of all time, once said, The double slit experiment has in it the heart of quantum mechanics. In reality, it contains the only mystery. But what's even weirder is that the observer effect isn't just limited to the quantum world. It happens in everyday life too. You've probably experienced it without even realizing it. Maybe when you're walking alone, you don't really think about how you look. But the moment someone else is watching, you suddenly become aware of your own movement, like, do I normally swing my arms this much? It's subtle, but just knowing you're being observed changes the way you act. There's an old psychological study from the 1930s known as the Hawthorne Effect. Researchers at a factory were testing whether changing the lighting would improve worker productivity. And sure enough, when they made the lights brighter, people worked harder. But when they made them dimmer, they also worked harder. In fact, every time they changed something, productivity improved. Not because of the changes themselves, but simply because the workers figured out they were being watched. A more interesting example comes from the infamous Kitty Genovese case in 1964. She was attacked outside her apartment in New York, and despite 38 people reportedly witnessing the attack, nobody intervened in time. Psychologists later called this the bystander effect. The more people there are, the less likely anyone is to step in because everyone assumes someone else will. But some researchers have argued that it's not just passivity, it's the observer effect in action. People freeze up when they know they're being watched. This applies to social media too. People act completely different in private compared to when they know they're being filmed. There's something about being observed that forces you into a version of yourself, one that might not even be real. French philosopher Michel Foucault wrote about this in his idea of the panopticon, a type of prison where inmates never knew if they were being watched, so they behaved as if they always were. He argued that society functions in the same way. We self-police because we assume eyes are on us at all times. But if observation changes reality, how much of what you experience is actually real? If the world shifts the moment you pay attention to it, then what is it like when you aren't looking? There's an old thought experiment that asks, if a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? The logical answer is yes. Sound is just vibrations in the air. But from an observer effect perspective, the real answer might be more unsettling. The tree, the forest, and the sound might not even exist in the same way without an observer. Some physicists, like John Wheeler, have even proposed that the universe itself might only exist because it's being observed. That space and time are shaped by the act of consciousness, he once said, We are participants in bringing about something of the universe in the distant past. Meaning the universe isn't just happening around us. We might be actively shaping it by looking at it. It's a strange thought. The idea that things exist in a kind of limbo until someone observes them. But if that's true, then what about you? How much of who you are depends on how others see you. It's easy to say, I know who I am, but do you? The way you act around family isn't the same as how you are with friends or strangers, or even yourself. You might not even realize how much of your personality is shaped by the fact that you're being watched. And if that's true, who are you when no one's looking? We tend to think of observation as passive, 
like you're just watching something happen. But what if watching is an act of creation? What if seeing something forces it to exist in a certain way? And if that's the case, then maybe the biggest observer effect isn't in physics or psychology or even the universe. Maybe the biggest observer effect is the one shaping you. Now think about how much of your life is spent being observed or being conscious of the possibility of being observed. It might sound like an exaggeration, but every time you're aware of someone watching, whether it's a stranger on the street or someone online, you shift your behavior. Social media, for example, has introduced an entire new level of self-awareness. It's not just about what you share, but about how much you're aware of being watched by thousands of unknown faces. And in that awareness, you change how you express yourself. You might feel the need to be more curated, more perfect, more your best self. This self-awareness, driven by observation, could be shaping not just how we act, but who we are becoming. It's like we're constantly refining our identity to match the expectations of those watching. But what happens when those eyes are removed? Who are you when there's no one around to define you? When you're not performing for anyone, what part of you remains? But I talked about this in a previous video more in depth, so let's move on. Consider artists, musicians, and writers. Many of them will tell you that when they're creating for themselves, their work has a different energy. The moment an audience is involved, there's a shift. It's subtle at first, but the work changes. It's not just the content that alters. It's the artist's relationship with what they're creating. They become aware of the people who might one day view it, and in that awareness, the piece evolves. There's a reason we can sometimes feel like we're playing roles in our own lives. From a young age, we learn to perform for our parents, our teachers, our friends. Over time, that performance becomes a routine. We get so good at it that we forget its performance at all but it's a script we follow without even realizing it, because observation, whether real or imagined, has shaped how we behave. It's not just in everyday life, though. Think about science. Some of the most fascinating breakthroughs have been made possible by the observer effect. In one example, physicist Erwin Schrödinger pointed out that, theoretically, quantum particles exist in multiple states at once until they're observed. This idea led to his famous Schrödinger's cat thought experiment which imagines a cat that is both alive and dead until someone opens the box and looks inside. This paradox shows just how powerful observation is in defining reality. Without observation, there is no reality to be defined. But while the observer effect might suggest that we shape the world around us, it also brings to think, what does it mean for things to be real? Are they only real because we see them, or do they exist independently of our perception? If our observation is creating reality, does that mean the universe exists in a different form when we're not around to witness it? Do things really cease to exist when we're not looking? Or are they in a state of potential waiting for our observation to bring them into reality? And yet, what about your own life? Your thoughts, your memories, your emotions? Are they shaped just by your own mind or by the eyes of others? Is your sense of self constructed only through the lens of observation? The observer effect can be seen not only in particles and physical phenomena, but in every moment of life. It speaks to the idea that we don't just live in the world, we're constantly engaging with it, shaping it with every glance, every thought, and every act of observation. This interaction is part of what it means to be alive. It's easy to dismiss these questions as theoretical or abstract, but they have real-world consequences. Whether it's in our personal relationships, our work, or how we present ourselves to the world, we're always aware of the gaze of others. And this awareness doesn't just change how we behave, it changes who we are. It is more than a scientific curiosity. It's a reflection of how deeply our lives are intertwined with the world we inhabit. And as much as we might try to escape it, we're always in the process of being observed, and in turn, creating reality 